right. So I've been asked to, by uh, the lovely gentleman over here to share some lessons I've had during the fundraising process for the entrepreneurs out there who might need that as well to get your companies rolling. First, a little bit of background about what we do. Uh, so Breezy, it, we let anyone tap into nearby cameras that they can control at iconic locations to capture the perfect group memory. And so, I uh, mentioned that already. Our customers are across the NBA. We work with awesome sports stadiums, teams, um, and recently landmarks as well. And this uh, past summer, we raised a $2.5 million seed round. So that's kind of context for everyone. Thank you. Just the beginning. All right, so fundraising is tough, right? And uh, I think it's the same for everyone out there, whether you're a minority or not, uh, for women in tech, for you know, eth ethnic uh, founders as well. I think we all have the same story to share, but uh, I wanted to get, give you guys my own perspective of what really worked for us and uh, the, some of the different things that we did. So, um, we had an awesome community to support our fundraising process. This is a picture of us at Techstars uh, when, we were, when we were invited to join Techstars Boston, and that was really the starting point for inspiring our approach to fundraising. So the problem was really that, not that we weren't getting meetings at the top of the funnel, but that investors had a really hard time, especially Canadian investors, to, get, to, to really commit to uh, being in your round. I'm sure that's a common problem. So how do you get over the fact, the fear of commitment in this case? Um, well, uh, we would always end up with these conversations ending with, okay, well, let's keep in touch. You know, this sounds great. Love to see what you're working on. Let me know when you have a term sheet, when you have a lead investor. Well, why can't you be my lead investor, you know? Uh, so, so, you know, always this, uh, this uh, sense of fear and lack of commitment that we, would, that we would get from most of the community that's conservative in investment. So um, really what I want to talk about is how to build that momentum using what we call the soft circling method. Um, and the idea, the key idea behind it is only negotiate when you have leverage. And that's the way to gain leverage. So step one, really easy. Uh, once you have an investor that's interested, uh, you, you enjoy talking to them, they understand your business, uh, just make the ask and be bold. Uh, make sure you know what their check size is, is so you can really find out how to position your ask. But all you have to say is, what would you need to see in my business to commit X dollars to our round? Be bold. Um, and they're going to say, oh, whoa, you know, <laughs> I would need to see a million dollars in revenue. I would need to see uh, some pretty, pretty amazing scaling plans. I would need to, uh, you know, the valuation needs to be reasonable. It can't be, you know, what everyone else in the Toronto market thinks that they're going to get. Um, or it's a percentage of ownership we would need minimally. Uh, it could be any, uh, any of the above. Or, you know, you need to relocate to San Francisco. All of these asks might seem crazy, wild, and just how do we find time to, to, to um, satisfy everything that investors want? So the key is finding out, though, what they are looking for in order to make the commitment. So get the fears out of them first. And step two, it's very simple. You just repeat it back to them. <laughs> so... What you're saying is, if I get a million dollars in ARR, you'd be ready to commit X dollars to my round. <laughs> and um, and uh, then follow up with, it. is there anything else? So they're going to say, OK, well, yeah, you need to, um, I don't know, hire uh, an amazing PhD in this area of research before I can actually believe in uh, you know, the R&D that you're going to create. And you just repeat that back. So what you're saying is, if I get a million dollars in ARR and I hire a uh, head of R&D and so-and-so, you'd be ready to commit X dollars in this round. Is there anything else? And so you just repeat that over and over until, <laughs> until you get all of their fears out, you get that down on a list, and you get the soft commitment. So, so you would just repeat it back to them. Let me know if I caught everything. Uh, given that we, you know, this, our value between that, we, you know, satisfy all your conditions, whatever those conditions might be, um, you're not actually, 
you're not, you don't actually need to say you're going to do them, but you're just trying to get a soft commitment from them. And by the time that they say, okay, you know what, actually, if you do do all, do all these things, that'd be a pretty great company. So yes, I will put 50K in your company, whatever. Um, so I'll just pause here and really just talk about what, what uh, some things to note here. They just, investors just want, all they want is risk mitigation. Um, this process might take the majority of your meeting time with them, so make sure you, you're at a point where you're ready to sense that they really understand your business. Uh, I already said, you're not, you, you don't have to make a commitment to these conditions yet. You don't have to negotiate whether you're going to move to San Francisco or not. Uh, so don't push back right away. End the meeting with a mutually un clear understanding of X dollars committed if those conditions are met, and always follow up with that email summary. And then the last thing is respectfully ask if they are comfortable with you sharing their name with other investors. And they might say yes, they might say no, and that's okay, right? If you're just respectfully asking if they would be an early supporter of your fundraise. Um, and then, <laughs> One, so the last step is, okay, now you can say, well, I have a soft commitment of X dollars. You rinse and repeat steps one to three, and you repeat that process until you're oversubscribed. So, I mean, 20 to 40% is an arbitrary number, but whatever you feel comfortable with based on the amount of commitment that you're, you feel like you're able to get from your investors, um, get to a point where you're uh, oversubscribed on your soft commitments, and then, Ladies and gentlemen, you have leverage. Here are the terms. We're oversubscribed. Are you in or are you out? <laughs> Just get the commitment. Okay, I'm uh, gonna wrap up here, things to avoid. Um, just so you're not wasting your time with some investors that are probably never going to commit. Uh, people who are asking for too many financials, um, trying to understand five-year projections when you're raising a seed round, probably doesn't really understand uh, what your, uh, doesn't understand early stage companies or are just looking to uh, get market intelligence. Um, any sign that they're, just, they're discriminating against you, any sign of prejudice, um, happens more often than you think. And a, a way to think about it, I think about it, is investors' jobs are to sell you their money. Money is money, money can come from anyone, and so you, so you get to choose who you take money from, so make that in your control. Uh, investors who don't understand your business and are asking the wrong questions, or are t telling you why things won't work, or you know, just quest ask the wrong questions, unhelpful feedback. Um, they're either overly conservative, they don't need to, um, uh, you, you really don't need to spend time taking feedback from uh, un unhelpful investors. And then lastly, lack of deal flow. Have they, what sorts of deals have they been doing in the last three to four months? Are they active investing? Or maybe they're just, maybe they're, they're running out of funds as well. So uh, if you're looking to move fast, try to find uh, speedy investors. And the last thing I'll leave you with is, it's a sales process. So getting to an answer is the most important thing whether if it's a yes or if it's a no, just get the answer. Don't, uh, don't let them leave you hanging, right? You can always, even if you get a no, you find out why, you can iterate on your, uh, on your story and the way you're presenting your company and, uh, and do better next time. So that's it, thank you. Questions? Hi, good evening. Uh, interesting points made by you. I have a question. When you approach an investor, do you tell them the number of other investors that you plan to approach, or do you have an amount in mind and see how much you can raise and accordingly go on to other investors? I think the goal for any entrepreneur is to not have too many investors. That's a lot of relationships to manage. So uh, if they're asking you a question like, how many investors are you looking to have in this round? You would say, uh, you know, I'm looking for a few meaningful ones. And for those who, uh, you know, aren't making the biggest contributions, they need to be bringing uh, other things to the table, like areas of expertise in my industry. Uh, 
Why are we not seeing more women, women leading tech as opposed to women in tech? With larger established companies, there's always that excuse of legacy mindsets and so on. With smaller startups, that excuse isn't there. So why the dearth of female leadership? That's a great question. My take on it is that you need support to do anything, whether it's to get a promotion from a coordinator to a manager or to just start a startup. Um, and I think that investment is one of the biggest signs of support in the ecosystem. Um, and frankly, women founders get a lot of prejudice when they start talking about their businesses. People just don't know if they have it in them based on past uh, historicals, maybe. Just not enough, not enough success stories in the, in the spotlight. Hi, I'm sure Jason's gonna get tired of hearing from me this evening, but one of the things I was most recently at, and thank you for asking that question about women entrepreneurs, I was with the Honorable Minister um, Ng, and who is the Minister of Small Business and Export Promotion, and there is a ton of money in the government waiting for women entrepreneurs. And I have a ton of information. I would love to hashtag it with TechTO. But aside from that, I'm from the city of Champions and Toronto. I was in Pittsburgh. I work with the NHL and the NFL. Congratulations for being so vast in who you have on your uh, clientele. But I have to say thank you and thank you. And continue your great work as well. I'm very happy that there's a Canadian company penetrating the sports market because it is a US dominated industry for sure. And I've had experience both sides of the border. And if a Penn State University can raise 18 million in a dance-a-thon in 24 hours, we sure can raise that doing something up here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.